In this video, I want to go over one of the tutorials that we have covered in class uh, that has to do with a basic sky replacement. I'm using an image of a castle uh, that I pulled down from Google Images just to demonstrate how this is done. Uh, these are principles that you can carry over into several of the projects that you do or in working with these supplied files uh, just to run through the tutorial. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is uh, file and open in Photoshop and pulling from the desktop, uh, locate my file and after I've done that I'm going to make sure first to unlock this background layer uh, by clicking the padlock icon next to it just to ensure that this is open. I'm also going to rename the layer just to make sure that I can have my nice organized layers palette and I can find where I'm at at all times. Uh, it's very helpful to be careful doing that sort of thing making sure that you have good access and good organization to your layers. Now just then I've gone up to File and Place Embedded, something we've done many times before in class, to bring in the sky replacement file that I'll be using. Uh, obviously at this point, the image uh, has this X over it, letting me know that it is not yet confirmed as a placement. You have to do one of two things to confirm it, uh, one of which is hit the check mark at the top of the screen, or the cancel mark, depending on what you want to do or just go back to your arrow. If you go back to the arrow it asks you if you want to place the file essentially confirming it. Just hit place and you're good to go. The reason why I'm able to do that without resizing it or anything is because it brings it into the width of the canvas which is essentially what I needed. There may be some situations in which you have to resize the photo after you place it in the canvas. So a couple of things first to do with this. First of which is I'm going to rasterize this. I know that I need to use the eraser on it and a few other things. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it by control clicking on the name of the layer and going to the rasterize option, converting it essentially to an editable file. Now I'm going to shift it around a little bit. Essentially what I'm going to do, I'll lower my opacity a little bit to help me with this. And you can see as this starts to come up, the horizon line for my sky replacement is down here. I'm running along it and then my horizon line for the castle photo, the actual photo that we're working with, is actually higher. It's about right here. Whenever you do a sky replacement, it's a good idea to try and line those up as much as you can. As long as you get in the ballpark, it will give you a better result because the clouds will look more natural. So what I'm going to do is just shift this one up until I can see the horizon roughly matching what I have in the distance here. That's going to give me a much better result, although it does mean that some things like this tree over on the side I'm going to have to remove entirely. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to raise the opacity back up a good bit. I still want to be able to see the castle in the background, but I also really want to be able to see uh, this area of the sky so that I can edit it correctly. I'm going to use my eraser tool from the toolbar on the left and I'm going to make sure I have a soft brush selected do that from the drop down up at the top and also use this parameter to change the size and the opacity of the brush. Both of those are important for these purposes because when you're trying to do something like a sky replacement here you usually need a large soft brush. So I'm actually going to use the bracket key to increase the size. I've got it a little bit large right now, I think maybe smaller. I've got it at 1500. And then I'm going to lower the opacity of this to more like 40 30, something like that. What that gives me the ability to do is just little by little edge away. Notice that my brush is not even completely touching the bottom of that sky replacement image. I'm just letting some of the bleed over from this being such a soft brush help me edge this away. Now I'm going to be moving up slowly but this is just one of those things that you want to be very very careful with. It's easy to overdo and if you do not do it in a smooth gradient style manner you will have artifacts left over that look extremely unnatural and you'll have to work to get rid of them. Right now I'm, I'm working on the hardest part of this one which is getting rid of that tree that's visible. I'm not going to just go up and directly erase it because I'm afraid of creating harsh cuts around these clouds. So something like this just little by little moving it away. Now if I take this replacement sky and I raise the opacity all the way up, you can see I'm still covering my turrets on this castle significantly. So with that, I want to make sure to do those very specifically rather than with the broad brush like I've been doing uh, just to get rid of the bottom of that image line. So I'm going to zoom in using Command Plus and then using still a soft brush, 
I'm going to go in and start to edge away some of this to make sure that turret remains visible. I'm actually using a Wacom for this, so I'm using a pen which feels a lot more natural for this type of work. You can do it with a mouse, you can very much do it with a mouse, but I really enjoy using a Wacom, and we provide them in the classroom, and then also they're not that expensive to purchase if you get the smaller tablets, the small Intuos. So this is a really effective way to do this. I'm not going to take off too much from this turret because it's kind of in the distance and a little bit of fog makes sense. However, on the roof here, I'm definitely going to want to remove some of it. It may even bring up my brush opacity a little bit. I've brought it up to 40. I'm not being super specific. I'm not doing an exact cutout. A little bit of fog, a little bit of uh, variance and the thickness of these clouds around them can actually be good. You just don't want to have too much. You want it to feel natural. The biggest thing about compositing photos like this is getting a natural look. It has a lot to do with lighting and then also little logical things like the location of light, the amount of clouds, if something is covered. I overdid it a little bit right here. You can push in and really see how that blue is blooming around the edges. That's something I would want to soften up a little bit. So I'll take a really soft brush and just kind of ease that gradient some. Let some blue bleed through, but not too much. Create kind of a halo effect around it. Try to get that feeling natural. Now I actually don't want this replacement sky to be put in at 100%. I'm probably going to drop it down a little so it's more like that. At this stage I have a much more natural feel to my overall composite and I'm going to do a couple of other things to it uh, to get a better result. One of those is at the bottom of the layers palette I'm going to go down here, pull up this option in the middle, this icon in the middle, looks like a circle split in half, and I'm going to locate hue and saturation. This is really handy for compositing photos as well because they come in with vastly different colors. But if I take one, and since this affects everything below it, I've placed it only above my image of the castle, I'm going to lower that saturation a little bit to make these mix a little bit better. So I'll drop it down to something like minus 35. Again, this varies from project to project. It depends on the image. You're doing this mostly by feel. The great thing about using this adjustment layer is I can toggle it on and off to really see the difference. Or if I decide I don't want it, I can completely undo it. This time though, I'm going to do another hue and saturation on the replacement sky that I brought in because it's a little too warm for my taste but I'm going to do it a different way. This one is not reversible. I'm going to go up, have the layer selected, go up to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I'm going to drop that one down a little bit to make that sky feel slightly more natural. Maybe minus 40, something somewhere in that area. So I've lost a little bit of color, but that's okay because I'm going to replace some of it. A couple of easy ways to do that, uh, one of which is to create a bloom of light that matches up with the sun and the sky there. Uh, so I'm going to call this light, create a new layer using the sticky note button at the bottom, which is down here. If you hover over it, it says create new layer. And then I rename it to light. I'm going to take a normal everyday paintbrush from over here on the toolbar. And I'm going to choose myself a good, strong, high saturation color and a nice, big, soft brush as well and I'm literally just going to paint that over in a ludicrous and heavy-handed fashion and then change the blending mode of it to color dodge. Screen works as well but I kinda like the effect that color dodge is having on those clouds. Now this effect is too strong uh, but it's easy to diminish because all we have to do is drop the opacity of that layer. So I usually bring it down to the bottom and then raise it slowly until I get something like that. Now, I asked in class, because I wanted you to point out what the logical inconsistency was with this photo, and that is that there's essentially two suns, because there's one over and to the right of the photographer, basically coming over their shoulder, 
and then I've also placed in a new one by bringing this this uh, sky replacement. I was aware of that at the time. This is just for tutorial purposes, but whenever you're putting something together, attempt to avoid, uh, especially for actual publication, attempt to avoid any inconsistency like that that immediately says that it's been photoshopped. Now, if I wanted to, I could use the clone stamp and really remove this sunlight from it, and that's essentially what I would want to do if I was actually using this for publication. But for right now, I just wanted to kind of serve as an example of how you can put something together and miss something simple like that, and it can come back to bite you because it really does say this was obviously photoshopped. I'm going to do one more thing in order to give this an overall cohesive look, and that is to add in a solid color above my sky replacement layer but I'm doing it below the light layer. I'm gonna bring in something like this something a yellow orange more or less and I'm gonna set the blending mode of that to overlay obviously much much too much too intense so I'm gonna drop it down to zero and then bring it up slowly and all I'm really trying to do here is warm the picture so I've got it at 13 percent opacity and you can see it makes a pretty significant difference just with that so this is, again, a really rudimentary method uh, to force your colors into harmony. You can basically tint them uh, with a solid color layer set to a blending mode like overlay and then lower the opacity. If you bring it up too high, this very quickly looks bad. If you keep it low and keep it subtle, you can usually get away with it. So this is the basic sky replacement and hopefully you'll find use for this in your projects.